Hi, everyone, and welcome to Husqvarna Tree Talks, hosted by me, Ingrid Ekström. And me, Jen Simmons. In a series of episodes, we are going to talk about different topics around the tree professionals. And why are we doing this, uh, Jen? Well, it's because we at Husqvarna have absolutely dedicated ourselves to spreading as much knowledge and information as possible to help our arborists and tree care professionals and foresters around the world advance their industry. So today is just one step in that, uh, that journey for yeah. us. Yeah, and in this episode, we're going to meet Dan Holiday, uh, an arborist from uh, Canada who's been a professional for many years. And he's going to share his tips and tricks around the topic work techniques. Yeah, Dan, through his years of being an arborist, has learned how to challenge himself in order to find the best and most efficient ways of working. So I think we're going to get a little bit of a taste of that journey that he was on and how he, how he does that process and how he has the mindset of finding more efficient ways of working every day. Dan is on Instagram. We ask everyone to follow him. He's Climbing Arborist, and I think you'll learn a lot more by, by following Dan there. Also, we'll have Joe Hedger with us today. Joe Hedger is one of our H-Team ambassadors. She's also a certified arborist. She is a business owner, but she's also a world champion climber. So we're going to hear from her, and we're going to hear about her journey as well, uh, not only for herself, but for her team on how they become more efficient in their daily work practices. Really interesting. But first, before we go to Dan and to Joe, uh, you've been working within this industry for a long time. What have you picked up around work techniques? I think the most amazing thing to talk about from that perspective is how diverse um, work techniques are for the arborist community and the tree care uh, community. Uh, you have to know not only uh, about tree health, plant health, how to really care for trees and care for the urban forests, but you also have to know how to operate equipment like chainsaws, chippers, things like that. You have to be almost a mechanic on site when you need to service uh, the, the equipment if, if necessary. But you need to know how to climb. You need to know how to rig uh, heavy blocks of wood from height. You need to also know how to work around high voltage power lines. You need to know about aerial rescue in case you need to help someone uh, in a tree. And you have to have absolutely mad knot, knot tying skills, which is something I have never actually learned myself. But uh, it's a quite a diverse and quite an amazing community of professionals. But enough from my perspective. I think we need to hear from a true professional, and that's Dan. We'll turn it over to you, Dan. Thank you, guys. So, my name is Dan Holiday. I'm from climbingalbris.com. Welcome to this tree talk that Husqvarna are presented. And today, my talk is going to be about efficiency. I'm absolutely obsessed with efficiency. So if you want to learn efficiency, you've come to the right place because I could talk about efficiency for days. Um, so what is efficiency? Well, efficiency is basically accomplishing a task in with the minimal amount of effort or energy expended and as well in in a good short amount of time. So if you can complete a task being a, as efficient as possible, you'll accomplish that task quickly and you'll use the least amount of energy for that task. So that is what I'm here to talk about today because in my opinion, efficiency is at the heart of tree work. It is everything that we do. We're always doing tasks. We're always trying to accomplish tiny little goals to work towards the bigger goal of the day of the week, of the month. So efficiency is really at the heart of pretty much everything we do. We do a physical job. Um, the, there needs to be a lot of communication between you know, the management, the, the salesperson, the, the foreman, the entire crew, the, um, you know, the grounds person to the climber, the person rigging, everybody it needs to be on board. Um, there's so many different levels. There's so many different ways that we can work efficiency into our own personal tasks. Say if you're the tree climber, you're thinking about efficiency for yourself within each little kind of move you make, each task you do. But you're also thinking about efficiency as the entire crew. So you need to think about how how tasks 
that you do and in what order you do them can help the crew as a whole accomplish the the main task of completing the job so efficiency there's so many layers to it um throughout tree work that it's you know it's never ending if you if you start to focus on efficiency then you will realize that your skills are improving and what I, and your skills once your skills start improving your efficient your efficiency will improve so it's like a, a circle i wrote an article uh, for a magazine and it was called efficiency improve my skills and then skills help improve my efficiency and it's just that continuous cycle of improvement all the way along um so if you as an individual want to improve your skills I would really encourage you to focus on efficiency. Um, and I'll give you a little bit of a background about how I came so obsessed with efficiency. I've been climbing and I've been doing tree work for about 18 years or so. And after about, uh, well, I'll say about six years ago. So after about 12 years or so, I really felt like my my skill level as a climber had really stagnated it just you know i wasn't feeling like there was any improvement whatsoever and that really annoys somebody like myself because i feel like i i always want to be learning i always want to be improving so to realize myself that uh my level of ability and skill was just kind of pretty much staying the same was quite frustrating and then I don't know what it was, but something prompted me. Oh, I do know what it was. My climbing prompted me to be focus on efficiency. And that was through working safely. So doing, you know, do working every part of the tree with two points of attachment, um, using a chainsaw, two hands on the saw at all times. And I was like, right, how can I how can I improve my efficiency while working as safely as I possibly can? And that is how I was able to improve my climbing skills and take them to the next level. Because once I started focusing on that small part of climbing and realized that efficiency was going to take it to the next level, I then started, um, you know, looking at all the different areas of my climb and how I did it and, you know, could I use different equipment to become more efficient? Could I use different points on my harness to store equipment more easily, um, to make movements smaller and easier and and quicker? So I started analyzing every part of my climbing, but then also every part of the the tree crew as a whole to to realize right. Now, every time I, I cut up um, like a, a trunk that's laying on the ground, we always put a tarp on the floor to catch all the sawdust, like every time. And that's become a real habit now. All the guys that that work on my crew, we, we all know it's just instinctive that as soon as we come to start cutting up logs, we're going to put a tarp down, catch all the sawdust, and that is going to save us you know, 15, 20 minutes of cleanup at the end of the day. So it means that we get back to the yard 15, 20 minutes quicker. And that's just by that one simple um, installation of a tarp next to the piece of wood. So if we're doing lots of little pieces all the way through the day, the entire day is going to flow much easier. Everybody is going to be on the same wavelength. Um, everybody is just going to know the next step to take before we get there and so we we're going to have we're going to come into less problems we're going to have less accidents due to stress um due to frustration because the work site on a, any typical day now i i feel like i've created an environment where everybody knows their own tasks will always uh, have a, a site meeting at the beginning of the day, even if it's a really short one because it's a simple job. So really simple jobs, short little site meeting. Everybody knows their task on the job, which is 
absolutely key to efficiency. Everybody needs to know what their task is. Um, so I've kind of developed, or I I haven't developed it. I've I've implemented in you know these site meetings on something a little more complex where there's there's various different um, tasks of the day. You know, two or three different trees to be pruned, maybe two climbs in a tree. There's there's a little bit more to think about. We we need to figure out what order is going to be the best way to complete the tasks in. Uh, and then sometimes you get a really complex job. That there's a lot of rigging going on. There's a lot of targets to protect. There's a lot of things that could be damaged. Um, you know, and we need to use things to protect windows. And, and all this needs to be set up before we start. But what I found is that doing those kind of things and setting everything up at the, be at the beginning of the day for the crew to save it might take 15 20 minutes at the beginning of the day but that's going to definitely save you way more than 15 20 minutes by the end of the day's completed because we're making a plan and for efficiency having a plan is absolutely key it's key for a crew it's key for an individual so if you're the groundsman you need to have you need to know the plan of the job but you also need to know your individual tasks and plans for yourself so you can be as efficient as possible making the team as efficient as possible as a climber you need to know everybody's tasks but you also need to know exactly what you're going to do and you need to pre-plan um, when it comes to climbing planning ahead is really what improves your skills so uh, I noticed that I was I was kind of climbing in the moment and and doing the next task, thinking of just the next task, and I would get there, I would, you know, to complete that task, and then I'd be thinking, right, what's the next task? Whereas now and over the last few years, and what I feel has made me such an efficient climber is, I think like five, six, seven steps ahead, and when I've thought that many steps ahead. You, you already know what's happening. You know when you need your groundsman or you know if you're going to need your groundsman in five, six minutes and you can communicate that, that to them. Um, and another thing that helps efficiency even more for me and my crew is we use their Bluetooth communication headsets. And, and that means that we can have a conversation and we can talk through things before they even, before, you know, 15, 20 30 minutes before we even need something to happen we can already be talking uh, planning out our next moves and so all the equipments there say if we're rigging the the rigging equipments at the base of the tree 20 minutes before we need it or you know i can say i'm going to need a bigger saw in the tree and so that's already been fueled up and and the lanyard's been put on it and it's ready to go so that when i ask for it the 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 grounds guys or girls don't he don't have to you know say oh five minutes i just got to fuel it up got to run to the truck got to do this do that so efficiency there's just like every single move that you make on a job site can can be an efficient move or it can be an inefficient move and those thousands of little tiny tasks and move you moves you make on the job site during the day um that can lead to you know like 30 40 50 minutes at the end of the day being saved and it's what makes um it what it's what can make your company work to the highest possible level provide the highest possible service that you can or the, the, or is that standard going to drop a little bit because the, the guys and girls on the cruise are starting to rush a little bit towards the end because they see the end of the day is coming. They want to get home. They're tired. Um, and, you know, standards start to slip. Quality starts to slip. There's so many things that can be affected as 
as energy levels start to drag, as uh, morale starts to drag. But if everybody's working efficiently and the whole job site is flowing, then, you know, productivity is going to be top. The, the quality of your work is going to be tip top. Like the, you know, the just the energy and the environment that you're working in is going to be so much better for so many days of the year than if you're not working efficiently and you're you're doing things and you're having to redo things and redo things because you're not doing it in the most efficient way. So uh, I'll give you a I'll give you a couple more examples. Um, you know, when when I'm choosing equipment, I decided after experience of climbing on the zigzag, which I love, I don't ever use it now when I'm blocking down because the actual the zigzag is so good at tending if i'm using it when i'm when i'm blocking down a trunk it will keep tending all the slack and so it's always tight and sometimes i want it a bit slack and and so that's like one tiny bit of efficiency that i do when i'm climbing uh, another one is when i'm using my lanyard where i might have used my lanyard for a second point of attachment for for making one branch one cut on a branch now i look right where's the best position i can put my lanyard to make 15 cuts and and so i'll 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 locate a branch or locate a stem where i know it's going to give me the maximum amount of reach for so many different branches that I don't have to keep taking my putting my lanyard on, taking it off, putting my lanyard on, taking it off. I can put it on one time and make the maximum amount of cuts I can because I've I've thought ahead, I've pre-planned. And that just when you start doing that kind of stuff, it starts, you know, you you notice, oh god, that was so good. I saved so much time there. And then on to the next, and then on to the next. And you just after a while of, of focusing on efficiency, you just get in this flow of knowing and planning ahead. And then that becomes second nature. You don't have to really think about it anymore because you start doing it, you know, day in, day out. And then you you create habits and repeating something over and over again creates a habit. And if you're creating good habits, that creates efficiency. And that's that's the ultimate goal. If you're being efficient at work, you're doing it you're completing the tasks in the sh in the in the best possible way using the least amount of energy and we go home at the end of the day we're not exhausted we have energy all the way through monday to friday and then you get to enjoy your evenings enjoy your weekends be productive flow through the week make some money enjoy your job and that's what it's all about so thank you very much for watching this talk on efficiency. Back to you guys in the studio. Thank you, Dan, for this really interesting way of describing work techniques and how you continuously strive for developing yourself, even if you have been very long in this profession. And I'm sure many of you can relate to what Dan is talking about. So Gent, we have been doing a lot of insights and of course knowing this target group or these customers uh, mm -hmm. pretty well, but mm -hmm. any thoughts from you around this? Uh, from the insights that work that we're doing, but also the extensive travel that you know, our teams have done around the world to, to be out there on the work sites and working with uh, tree professionals and arborists all around the world. I think what really is interesting that comes from this is, is that they're it's truly a, a global community. No matter if you're in uh, the United States, if you're in Europe, if you're in Japan, if you're in Australia, the passion that this industry has for urban forestry, for the environment, for efficiency and safety as well. This is a, this is a very global thing for our, our arborists and, and tree professionals. But at the same time, it's also interesting and we have to recognize that this is, these are individuals. They, even though they share a lot of passions, the work techniques that are, cho are chosen, the, the, the gear selections that are, that are chosen are absolutely an, an individual's choice. So it's a global community, shares a lot of passions, but you have to respect that individualism that they have as well.
And now it's actually time to introduce Joe Hedger, our H team ambassador, uh, calling in directly from uh, New Forest in south of England. And um, hi, Joe, how are you doing? Hello, very good, thank you. So, who are you? Can you introduce yourself a little bit short? Uh, yeah, so I've been a climbing arborist for 20 years and I run a tree care business, and this is its 16th year. Uh, I live on the south of England, um, just come in from a work site right on the Solent, so looking straight out over the sea, so that was nice. And uh, as you've already mentioned, I'm a Husqvarna H team ambassador and do a lot of tree climbing championships. Cool. And I heard you are keeping busy, keeping yourself busy and winning a lot of <laughs> medals uh, during the years. Yes, yeah, I've done it for a very long time, so I uh, really enjoy it. Won, won uh, five European and four world championship titles. Ah, oh, yeah, that's definitely impressive. And uh, I know you have been listening to Dan's um, speech about the topic work techniques, and uh, I would like to ask, or me and Gent would like to ask a couple of questions uh, around that topic. So how do you motivate your team when it comes to efficiency? So it's an interesting uh, topic because when I uh, started thinking about it as a self-employed person, uh, we tend to get paid for the task or the job that we're going to be doing rather than how long it takes us to do it. So if you start off as a self-employed person, you initially, without even realize doing it, you'll implement things or little techniques that will make you more efficient to save you time, energy, and effectively uh, earn more money. The difficulty comes is that when you employ people, how do you instill those techniques uh, and that way of thinking, I suppose, into your members of staff? Um, I'm basically trying to start from scratch, trying to make your business model um, more efficient and encourage your staff to uh, see the benefits of it. So for example, I would, I kind of give ownership to the, to my staff so I let them have a responsibility um, you know the tasks that I give them are doable within a certain time frame and um, you know they they feel ownership of that that job they get good feedback from the customer they get uh, really good feedback from me and then effectively over a long period of time what that then allows me to do is give them better skills better equipment um, they feel proud about what they do. They feel pride. Um, and effectively then, because they're more efficient, I can then pay them more money. So there's there's so many benefits to it. Yeah, I can imagine. And, and really important to continuously working with that part, with the team and, of course, yourself as well. Uh, how, do make sh how do you make sure that efficiency doesn't become a workaround for safety, which I know is super important in your work? So there's a misunderstanding that in order to be good at this job or make money doing it, uh, you need to be quick. And the trouble is speed isn't efficient because what most people will do without realizing it is they'll cut corners uh, in, their, in their safety and then the way that they work. So for example, they may be running out of time. So they think, oh, well, I'll fell a bigger section or I won't bother putting a rope on it. Um, you know, and that may work for a number of times, but eventually at some point, uh, that may obviously cause a, an accident. So downtime is not efficient if I can't work. So what you need to do is implement small changes in your business. Like Dan was talking about, um, it may take a certain period of time in the morning to talk about something, but if, effectively, if I can in, sort of decrease uh, the time it's going to take me to do something, um, that will effectively make it more efficient. So it's not necessarily speed of how we do something is how efficient we can be doing something that will increase the amount of time uh, that it will take us to do it. I have a question for you. It's um, hopefully an easy one. Maybe we make it hard, but I want to actually hear your top five efficiency tips for the audience. Okay. This could be quite hard because uh, there are so many, but let's do, um, let's do five. So okay. probably, um, Probably for me would be right back in the office before we've even left site. So if I can be efficient in the office with good communication with with uh, customers, good paperwork, um, you know, job sheets, 
staff know what equipment to take. There's no point turning up on site with wrong equipment. Um, investing in your staff, so upskilling them on uh, how they use a chainsaw, how they fell trees, what climbing equipment that they use. This is quite a broad one, but it's a really important one. Uh, invest time and money into your staff. Um, what would be number three? Probably site planning. So actually when you turn up on site, like Dan was talking um, about taking time to talk through the job when you first turn up on site, it may take us, let's say, 15 minutes. But if everybody on site knows what's happening, that could be efficient because I already know the job, but it's in my head. So I need to somehow get that out to my staff. Uh, four, definitely invest in better equipment modern equipment, things change really quickly in this industry, whether it be chainsaws, tree climbing equipment. So if I can use equipment that's more efficient on me, so for example, a, a battery product over a longer period of the time during the day, if I don't have to keep pull starting a chainsaw rather than a button, I'd imagine if you took that time frame over a day, that's gonna be more efficient. And number five, when you finished your job, I would say how you clear up efficient, uh, efficiently. So uh, if we've only dragged brash in one area on the site, it's easier to clear up. It's not everywhere. We could use tops, uh, you know, good system of work. We work from the back of the garden to the front where the chipper is. Um, so we're not doing stuff unnecessarily. Okay. Just a, another question. When, when and how often do you do gear checks? on on climbing equipment you mean yeah exactly uh so everyone that's got their own climbing equipment but will check it before each climb on site so they'll do or... their own on on site they'll do, they'll do their own gear gear inspection on site they do a weekly uh gear check where it's actually written and recorded and then we do a six monthly where an external person comes in and checks our equipment so a lot of a lot of checks Impressive. I think that's a really good tip uh, as well. That you have a written record of the gear checks. You said, "Yes, yeah. I mean, for us in the UK, it's part of our legislation that we have to keep a, a written record of of what we've got. But as a business, it would make sense because, particularly once you've got a number of employees, you need to know how many ropes you've been given out, how many carabiners, how old they are, um, and and effectively that would be efficient because." I could always go to a record. I can see how old something is. I can buy equipment when I when I need to, uh, or if I've got surplus funds, if it's a tax, you know, end of year year tax. Um, so yeah, there's there's lots of benefits to that. Well, no matter if it's a legislation or not, it's still a good tip, right? Mm. Yeah, definitely. I think we need to thank you, uh, Joe, for being a part of the program. Really great to to hear your thoughts about work techniques. No, thank you. It's been a real pleasure to be involved. Thank you. Well, today we've heard some interesting tips and tricks from some of the best professionals in the world, and we certainly hope that you found it valuable. But also, we want to thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you for joining us today, and we hope that you join us next time as we continue our journey on a mission to advance the industries of arboriculture and forestry.